Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Clark Kent and his friends Batman and Robin are shocked by a startling revelation that leads to an incredible mystery. And now, the adventures of Superman. Following his spectacular solution of the Preville mystery and the arrest of the Honorable Ed Clayton, political demagogue, Clark Kent telephoned editor Perry White in Metropolis to relay the sensational story of the man-made drought. White then gave Kent a piece of information which sent the reporter rocketing back to Metropolis in the fastest way possible, as Superman. Today, as we join him, once more in his guise and garb of Clark Kent, he is entering Editor White's office in the Daily Planet. Listen. Hello, Chief. Uh, great Caesar's ghost. Kent! Well, that's right, but why the surprise? Well, how, how, how did you get here so... So, so, so. What difference does that make? Difference? Why, why I was just talking with you on that. Oh, forget uh, that for the moment. What's going on here, Chief? I wish I knew. Look, you're not sick, are you? No, no, I'm not sick. Well, then what is the matter with you? You tell me that something terrific is going on and you need me here at once. When I get here, you make noises like a, a like an expiring fish. You can't. I, I, I always said it was impossible. But maybe you are at that. Maybe I'm what? Will you please tell me what you're talking about? Yes, I'll tell you. But you tell me something first, will you? Well, certainly. What do you want to know? Now, look. I talked to you on the telephone only a few minutes ago, right? Yes, but what... At that time, oh. you were in Freeville, oh, 1,500 oh. miles away. Well, um... So you could get from Freeville, uh, how, uh, to Metropolis, a distance of 1,500 miles in uh, 10 minutes, I, uh, uh, unless uh, unless you are Superman. No, no, wait, wait. Uh, now, can you explain... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Chief. <laughs> uh, how, how do you know I, I called you from uh, Freeville? <laughs> well, I... Uh, well, didn't you? Uh, did, did I say so? Well, of course you did. And you're not going to get out of it any... Uh, but... Hey, wait a minute. Uh, what's the matter? Now that you mention it, I don't remember that you did say you were calling from Freeville. Oh? Ah, so that's the answer, huh? Yeah. You were right here in Metropolis when you called me. Probably uh, right around the corner, huh? Well, all I can say, Chief, is that you're pretty sharp. Yeah, sharp as a butter knife. <sighs> Boy, I ought to have my head examined for thinking, even for a second, that you could be Superman. Oh, not at all, Chief. Why do you... Oh, skip it, skip it, skip it. Yeah, Where's right. Lois? Didn't you come back with you? No, she stayed in Freeville to cover Ed Clayton's trial in the special election for Senator. Good, good. Hey, now, look, will you please tell me what terrific something has been going on here that required my immediate presence? No. What? Well, frankly, I don't know much about it, Kent. You don't know much? Inspector Henderson called about an hour ago and asked for you. Oh, really? What's up? Well, I tell you, I don't know. All Henderson would tell me is that the most sensational story in years is going to break today, and for some special but secret reason, he wants you to come over to police headquarters as soon as you can. Well, sounds interesting. I'll hop right over to headquarters. Uh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Kent. You, you can't see Henderson right now. Why? You just said he wanted me to I know, over I know, but he called again a few minutes ago just before you came in. Well? And this time he said for you to sit tight, if and when you got in, not to stir a step from this office until he calls you. Oh, that's odd. He said he'd probably call within the next 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, maybe that's the inspector now. I'll take it. Never mind. I've got it. Hello? Who? No, no, no. I can't see him today, Miss Backrack. I'm very busy. Betty. Uh, sorry, sorry. False alarm? Yeah, a fellow from the club with too much time in his hands looking for a place to waste it. Oh. He pounded my ear all last evening with his theory on the monkey burglar, and I guess he wants to continue the discussion. Monkey burglar? What's that? What's that? Don't you read your own newspapers? <laughs> your voice is changing, Chief, and you what? forget I've been away for a few days. Oh, that's right. Well, well, the monkey burglar is the hottest story in Metropolis right now, Kent. Is that so? Tell me something about it. Great Caesar. Maybe that's why he's calling you in. Now, look, Chief, this is all Greek to me. I know what a monkey is and I know what a burglar is, but I don't see the connection. Well, here it is, Kent. Now, for the last few days, or nights, rather, we've had a series of sensational robberies in Metropolis. How do you mean sensational? Well... This fellow, who was obviously an amazing acrobat, has been walking up the walls of very fashionable apartment buildings and apartment hotels. Walking up the wall? Yes. Letting himself in through the window to some millionaire's quarters, looting the place. Then he goes out the same way he came in. No kidding. And get this. In each case, he's robbed a building with doormen, elevator men, and even watchmen. 
but none of them has ever seen him. Hey, that sounds incredible, Chief. Yes, I know. But... Look, if, as you say, no one saw him, how do you know he goes up the walls of the buildings? Well, a couple of his victims have seen him slip in through the window and after rifling their apartments, slip out the same window. Well, maybe use a fire escape. <laughs> that would be easy. Except that he robs apartments only on the side of the buildings in each case where there are no fire escapes. Oh, I see. Well, look, Chief, if one or two others of this uh, uh, monkey burglar's victims saw him, as you say, they should be able to identify him. Yes, but they say they can't because it was always too dark when the burglary took place. Uh, but it does sound a little fishy to me that none of his victims can tell us anything about the fellow. It does to me, too. And that's why I say I think Henderson is holding out on us for some reason. So I want you to... Uh, just a minute. Hello? Oh, hello, Inspector. Yes, yes, he's here. Is that Henderson? Yes. Uh, what's that, Inspector? Well, he's... Okay. Right, Inspector. Don't hang up. Bye. I... Oh, I wanted to talk to him, he Chief. He said he hasn't time to talk now, but he wants you to get right over to headquarters because the big story he mentioned is about to break. Oh, that's all I want to know. I'm on my way, Chief. Okay, but don't forget about the monkey burglar. How could I forget? I'll phone you from headquarters as soon as I get the lowdown. So long. Of course, you know, Inspector, you've got both Perry White and me sitting on tax. What is this terrific story you're going to let me in on? You'll see, Kent. And you'll agree it's terrific. Why, in all my years on the force, I've never seen or heard of anything like this. Hey, this gets better and better. No. No, it gets worse and worse. What do you mean? You know, a police officer isn't easily shocked, Kent. Especially when he's been on the force as long as I have. Oh, I know, but what... But the... I'm... I'm shocked now. Shocked to my very toes. Shocked about What? Look, will you, for heaven's sake, please tell me what this is all about, Inspector? All right, here it is. Kent, I know who the monkey burglar is. You... you do? Yes. And that's what's shocked me so. Really? Well, I'd like to see this combination, monkey, acrobat, and magician. Who is he? You'll see him. He's on his way here now. Ought to be here any minute, in fact. Hey, I don't get it, Inspector. You ought to be tickled to death to catch this fellow. But instead, you look as if you've been forced to lock up your own son or nephew or... Well, it's almost that bad. What? Yeah. Oh, just a minute, Ken. Yes? Healy, Inspector. He's here. Should I bring him in? Yeah. Yeah, bring him right in, Healy. Right, sir. Here comes our monkey burglar now. You really got me curious, Inspector. I can hardly wait to see this phenomenon. Well, hang on to your hat, Kent. Because in just a few seconds... You're going to get the shock of your life. Almost breathless with curiosity and excitement, Clark Kent stands beside the grim-faced Inspector Henderson, his eyes on the door through which the mysterious monkey burglar will enter. Who is he? Well, we'll know in a moment when we return to the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. In Inspector Henderson's office, where he is waiting for the mysterious monkey burglar to be ushered in, Clark Kent starts in surprise, then steps forward, smiling and hand outstretched, as the door opens and Sergeant Healy ushers two figures into the office. Both figures, a man and a boy, are clothed in tight-fitting costumes and capes, and they wear bat-like hoods and masks. Batman and Robin. Well, how are you? Hello, Clark. Hi, Mr. Kent. Hi. How's tricks, Inspector? Hello, Inspector. Hello. Say, you fellas gave me a start. Inspector Anderson here told me to expect the monkey burglar to walk in and here The monkey two... burglar? Uh -huh, that's right, Robin. Inspector Anderson said that... No, the... I've been reading about that lad, Inspector. Now I gather you call Robin and me and Kent here in to give you a hand in running him down, right? Not quite, Batman. We've already run him down. You have? Who is he? He's right here in this room. You... What? Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean, Inspector? There's just Batman and Mr. Kent and I here. And you and Sergeant Healy. Why, you can't possibly mean you think one of us is the monkey burglar, can you? I can, and I do. B but who? Are you the... don't know how much it hurts me to say this, gentlemen. But the person we've come to know as the monkey burglar is Robin. Me? What? Robin? Oh, of all the ridiculous... Now, wait a minute, Inspector. You heard me. I now have positive proof that Robin is the mysterious monkey burglar. Put the cuffs on him, Healy. Speechless for a moment, Clark Kent, Batman, and Robin can only stare open-mouthed as Sergeant Healy steps forward and snaps a handcuff on the wrist of Batman's young companion. Come along, son. Robin, as we know, has always been with Batman, a stalwart defender of law and order, striving at the danger of his life to protect the weak against the strong. 
and uphold the laws of his city and country. And yet Inspector Henderson has just said he has positive proof that Robin is the amazingly acrobatic thief. What can this mean? We'll learn more about this startling situation tomorrow, so don't fail to be with us then. Yes, be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Say, gang, don't forget that this is Boy Scout Week. It celebrates the 37th anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America. Our scouts right here in America and in 50 other nations are doing a swell job working to make this a better world. Let's back them up all the way. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Clark Kent and Batman feel secure that Robin has an alibi, only to realize that their young friend is not free to account for his past activity. And now, the adventures of Superman. When police inspector Henderson called Clark Kent, he told the reporter that a sensational story was about to break and asked him to hurry over to police headquarters at once. There, Henderson announced that he now knew the identity of the mysterious thief whom the newspapers had nicknamed the Monkey Burglar, an amazing acrobat who scaled the outside walls of fashionable apartment buildings and robbed the wealthy occupants. After advising Kent to prepare for a shock, Henderson opened his office door and admitted the famous Batman and Robin, his young companion. Then the inspector stunned his visitors by pointing a stern finger at Robin and saying, Gentlemen, I have positive proof that Robin, Batman's companion, is the thief we know as the monkey burglar. As we continue now, Kent, Batman, and Robin stand in speechless astonishment as Sergeant Healy, at Henderson's command, steps forward and snaps a handcuff on Robin's wrist. Then Batman finds his voice. This... Wait a minute. Have you lost your mind, Inspector? Certainly not, Batman. I you know... You must it. have. How can you say that Robin is the monkey bird? Why, of all the... Take it easy, Batman. He's probably kidding. No, I'm kidding. not. Why don't joke? Excuse me if I don't laugh. I'm not joking, Robin. What? You're not. Well, cut it out, Inspector. This is going I far I tell enough. you, I'm not joking. I know Robin is the mysterious monkey burglar, and I can prove it. Nonsense. Yeah? I only wish it were nonsense, Ken. Well, now, look, you As can't... I told you before, finding this out about Robin was one of the greatest shocks of my life. Look, Inspector, a joke's a joke. But this one's gone far enough. Take those handcuffs off, Healy. Go ahead. Take them off for a few minutes. Yeah, please do. They bore me. Now, uh, wait outside, Healy, please. Right. All right. Now that you've had your little fun, Inspector... Will you please tell me seriously why you got us all down here? Yes, I haven't time for tomfoolery. There's plenty Will of... Will you fellas please get wise to the fact that I'm dead serious? Robin is the monkey burglar. And somebody's a monkey's uncle. Quiet, Robin. I have definite proof that he's the young acrobat who's been making the whole police force look like... Like, like, like... Like monkey? Well, go ahead and laugh. But you can't laugh Robin out of this rap. Now, wait, Inspector. Why do you accuse Robin? Because he was seen by a couple of his victims. And they're on their way down here to identify him now. Identify him? Why, you Who are they? Well, one of them is Nelson Spaulding, the banker, who was in bed when Robin came in through the window of his 20th floor apartment. 20th floor apartment? That's right, Kent. The boy apparently scaled the side wall, picking handholds in the stone and using his rope on the ledges to climb 20 stories. Pretty neat, huh? Bet you didn't think it was in me. Oh, cut the comedy, Robin. Go on, Inspector. Well, the moon was shining into the room. 
So Spalding managed to get a good look at the prowler. And he said it was Robin? No. No, but he said the monkey burglar was a youngster about five feet tall, weighing about 110 pounds. Hey, those are my measurements, but exactly. What else? He was wearing a skin-tight costume and tight red jacket. Uh Uh-oh. And a bat-like hood and half mask. Also, he carried a rope. That's an accurate description of Robin, all right. Certainly is, Batman. Oh, yes. And Spaulding said the robber was armed. Oh, now, wait a minute. I never carried a gun in my life. Of course not. That makes it obvious that somebody was impersonating Robin, Inspector. Sure it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. Can you find me another youngster in Metropolis, exactly Robin's size, who is also an amazing acrobat and rope expert? Well, it's possible. Yeah? Then you got to show me. Now, here's what Roger Hartley, another victim, told us. Hartley, the steel magnet? That's right. He says the young prowler locked him in a closet before he rifled the apartment. But Hartley's bed lamp was on, so he got a look at him first. Well? He gave us the same description Spaulding did. Great Scott. But, but it wasn't me. Why, of course it wasn't, Robin. Look, Inspector, this is ridiculous. Now, you've known Robin a long time, and you know he's always been on the side of law and order. I know he used to be, Kent. Well, he's But he's still... not anymore. Oh. And I've got the facts to prove it. What facts? Just that two men say they saw the burglars. Well, they're highly reputable men, and... Well, that's all of the better. When you bring Robin face to face with them, I'll bet you a new suit of clothes they say that Robin isn't the monkey bird. Okay, Batman. I'll take that bet. As soon as Spaulding and Hartley get... Oh, just a minute. Yeah? Oh, they are, huh? Yeah. Okay, we'll be right down. Mr. Spaulding and Mr. Hartley are here now. Come on, let's go to the lineup room. Leaving his office, Inspector Henderson motions to Sergeant Healy to fall in beside Robin. And followed by Kenton Batman, he leads the way to a room built like a small theater. There, Robin is placed on a brightly lighted stage. And first, Nelson Spaulding, the distinguished banker, is ushered into the room. Take a good look at this boy, Mr. Spaulding. Is he the one who burglarized your apartment? Yes, he's the one, Inspector. Uh Uh-oh. Thank you, Mr. Spaulding. You may go now. Healy, bring Mr. Hartley in here. Look at this boy carefully, Mr. Hartley. Is he the one who entered your apartment last night, locked you in a closet, and then rifled your place? Yes. He's the one, Inspector. Oh, no. Easy, Batman. Thank you, Mr. Hartley. You may go now. I'll get in touch with you later. Very well, Inspector. Good night. Well, Batman, are you satisfied now? No, of course not. I still say this is absolutely ridiculous. It's open and shut that somebody's impersonating Robin to throw the police off the track. I go along with you on that, Batman. Yeah, well, I don't buy it at all. Didn't you both just hear Mr. Spaulding and Mr. Hartley identify Robin? Yes, of course we did. But Mr. Spaulding saw the prowler by moonlight in the shadows of his room. That's right. And Mr. Hartley saw him only for a few seconds in the light of a small bed lamp. Both of them were startled, and if the youngster were dressed uh, uh, like Robin and were about Robin's size... Oh, yes, and if he just scaled a 20-story building, a trick hardly any boy but Robin can do, for my money, it was Robin. And any jury in the land will say so. Well, that's just circumstantial evidence, Inspector. Yeah, well, it's good enough for me. Oh, wait, wait Inspector, wait. What? I'm going to knock your theory into a cock hat right now. Yeah? Well, go ahead. Okay. Mr. Hartley was robbed last night. Mr. Spaulding was robbed the night before last, right? Right. And three other millionaires were robbed on the three preceding nights. Nothing cheap about us monkey burglars, is it? Let's just stick to Spaulding and Hartley for the moment, Inspector. They were robbed the night the night before last. Now, it just happens that I can't provide an alibi for Robin because I've been out of town for the last couple of weeks. I just got back this morning. So did I. But I'm sure that Robin can alibi himself. Yeah? Well, Robin, where were you last night and the night before last at 11 o'clock? The time at which each of the robberies were pulled. Oh, that's easy. I was, um... Well? Go on, tell him, Robin. Oh, jeepers. I I can't tell him, Batman. You what? I thought so. Why can't you tell, Robin? Well, I... You've got to tell us. But I can't. Look, Robin, you know there's a serious charge against you. Unless you're going to count for your movements last night or the night before, you'll be in trouble. I know it, Mr. Kent, but I can't tell you where I was. I... I just can't. I've heard enough. I'm satisfied. He's the monkey burglar, all right. Book him and lock him up, Healy. Stricken, Batman and Clark Kent can only stand helplessly by as Robin, his face pale, is led away by Sergeant Healy. Why did Robin refuse to account for his whereabouts on the nights of the robberies? Can he be the monkey burglar? We'll be back in a moment to find out. So stand by.
formally charged with being the daring monkey burglar, Robin has been fingerprinted and locked in a cell in the juvenile quarters of the city jail. Now, an hour later, Batman and Clark Kent are permitted to visit him, and we join them in his cell. Why wouldn't you tell Inspector Henderson what you did last night and the night before? You ought to know that, Batman. I ought to know. What do you mean, Robin? I can't tell you, Mr. Kent. I forgot I can tell you, because you know who I am. I know who... Oh, you mean that you're Dick Grayson? Sure. Oh, I think I get it now. You uh -oh. see, I went to the movies with Jim Olsen last night and then stayed at his house overnight. Uh-huh. And the night before, I was at Charlie Singh's house. His father is the chemist at the health department, you know. He was helping us with our chemistry lessons. Oh, so that's it. Sure. Neither Jimmy nor Charlie Singh know I'm Robin. They only know me as Dick Grayson. So they can't provide an alibi for me. Unless I reveal to them and to the whole world that Dick Grayson and Robin are one and the same. Uh-oh. Of course I can't do that. Oh, no, you can't. But we can't let you go to jail either for crimes you didn't commit. What do you suggest we do, Clark? Oh, you got me, Batman. This is one of the toughest problems I've ever faced. Frankly, Batman and Clark Kent, who is really Superman, look at each other. Unable to see a way out of this strange web of incriminating circumstantial evidence. They admit that Robin's identity cannot be revealed. But without revealing his identity, how can he be saved from a long prison term? Well, you can be sure that Superman and Batman are not going to stand by idly for long. And tomorrow they hit on a daring plan. So be sure to find out what it is and if it succeeds. So be with us again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Clark Kent and Batman plan a trap for the monkey burglar. They are unaware that Robin, spotted by the burglar's henchman, is dangerously unprotected. And now, the adventures of Superman. Identified as wearing a costume similar to Robin's and displaying a similar acrobatic skill, an unknown boy has been electrifying Metropolis by scaling the walls of skyscraper apartments and robbing the wealthy occupants. Inspector Henderson brought Robin face to face with two of the victims each of whom said that Batman's young companion is definitely the spectacular thief whom the newspapers called the Monkey Burglar. Then, to the dismay of Batman and Clark Kent, Robin refused to account for his whereabouts during the robberies and was promptly arrested and jailed. Later, he explained to Batman and Kent that he could not provide an alibi without revealing his identity as Dick Grayson. And as we continue now in Robin's cell, Batman says to Kent, We can't let Robin be sentenced for crimes he didn't commit, Clark. And he can't reveal his identity as Dick Grayson, either. What do you suggest we do? Uh, I wish I knew, Batman, but it looks pretty bad. Sure does. Oh, don't you worry, Robin. We'll get you out of this some way. You hope. The monkey burglar, whoever he is, seems to have me roped, tied, and branded. Well, obviously, what we've got to do is find out who the monkey burglar really is. If I could only tell Henderson that the idea of Robin being a thief is ridiculous on the face of it, because he doesn't need the money. I've got plenty, you know. Well, you can only do that by revealing your identity as Bruce Wayne. Exactly. So we're right back where we started. Wait a minute, Batman. What? Just thought of something. Let's go see Inspector Henderson. What for? Got a little idea, which, if it works, might lead us to the monkey burglar. Gee, what is it, Mr. Kent? I'll tell you later, Robin. Meanwhile, keep your chin up. If Inspector Henderson will play ball with us, we'll have you free in jig time. Come on, Batman, let's get out of here. Now, 
Doctor, just listen a moment, Inspector. Look, the you're whole... wasting your time, Kent. But I tell you, According I'll According have... to the law, I can hold Robin for 48 hours before he comes up for bail. I know you can. And I'm if only... you think you can talk me into releasing him before that... But you've got to release him, Inspector. That's the only way we can find the monkey burglar. I've already got the monkey burglar. Oh. If you mean Robin, Inspector, you're all wet. Now, just a minute, now, Wait a minute, wait a minute, both of you. Listen to me, Inspector. It's no use, I, Kent. But I only... The evidence I've got against Robin is airtight. What evidence? Yes. Just because a thief dresses up like Robin and a couple of fuddy duddies mistake him in the, the dark is no... The witnesses are highly responsible men. They made a mistake the same as you did. If you'll now just you open your eyes, please, Batman... Please. Wait a minute. Cut it out. I know you're upset, Batman, but quiet down, will you? Well, I tell... Please. Okay, Clark. I'm sorry, Inspector. Forget it. Now, look, Inspector... You've known Batman and Robin a long time, haven't you? Yes. And on many occasions, they've been of great aid to the police department, right? Well, yes. What, You've what's never that? had the slightest reason to question their honesty and integrity, have you? Certainly not. Thanks. But what does that prove? It proves that Robin is entitled to the benefit of the doubt. And it there proves There is that... no doubt, Kent. Oh, of course Robin there... was positively identified as the monkey burglar by two victims of the monkey burglar. I still say that's please, a lot... Please, Batman, wait a minute. Let me handle this. Well, okay, okay. Now, look, Inspector. Mr. Spaulding, the banker, says he saw this monkey burglar in his room by moonlight, didn't he? That's right. And then he saw Robin face to face and identified Now, wait a minute, him. wait a minute. The fellow he saw was Robin Size, wearing a similar costume and a hood and half mask. Right. Under those conditions, isn't it conceivable that Mr. Spaulding could very easily mistake the prowler for Robin? Which is obviously what he was meant to do well, because course. the fellow was impersonating Robin. Oh, rats. The prowler was a youngster, and he climbed the face of a 20-story building using only his hands and a rope. But that... And Robin's the only remarkable kid acrobat and rope expert I ever heard of. Ah, that you ever heard of. But that doesn't mean that Robin is the only remarkable acrobat or rope expert. Don't you see at least the possibility that somebody just as good at those things as Robin is deliberately posing as our young friend in order to throw the police off his track? Why, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Well, yes. Yes, I admit that's a possibility, ah. but I think it's pretty far-fetched. Certainly not more far-fetched than believing Robin's a thief. Oh, come on, Inspector. Come on, give us a chance to clear this boy. Release no, him and... No, can't I can't. But I... The mayor, the newspapers, all the big shots in this town have been riding me on this case, demanding that I catch the monkey burglar. Well, that's just it. I think we can catch the real burglar and recover some of the loot, if you'll cooperate. But we've got to act fast. Yeah? How? Well, I've got a little plan, but it depends on your releasing Robin for 48 hours. I'll be responsible for so him. So will I. And so will Perry White and the Daily Planet. Oh, now, look, Just fellas. for 48 hours, Inspector. What well, can you lose? Well... Just for 48 uh, hours. I guarantee that if we haven't caught the real monkey burglar by that time, we'll turn Robin back to you. That's a fair deal. How about it, Inspector? Well, before I commit myself, what's your plan, Kent? Uh, well, I'd, I'd rather not discuss it yet. It isn't quite perfected. Oh, but now, wait be... a minute, no, wait a no, minute. No, 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 I've heard that line from you before. Okay, but have I ever given you a bum steer? Well, no, but... All right, then be a good sport and play ball, Inspector. I don't think that deep in your heart you believe Robin is guilty either, so give us a chance to clear him, huh? Oh, drat you, Kent. You could talk the hind leg off of a mule. Then you'll do it? Yes. Yes, I'll release him. That's wonderful. Thanks a lot, Inspector. But only for 48 hours, mind you. That's a bargain. Make out the necessary papers, Inspector. One of us will be right back to pick him up. Come on, Batman. Okay, Ken. Look, Clark, 48 hours doesn't give us much time. What's your plan? I haven't time to explain now, Batman, but if you'll just do as I say and not interrupt me, I think we can put it over. All right, what do you want me to do? First, I want you to take Robin over to Jim Olson's house. To Jim's house? What for? I think he'd be safe there. Tell him to stay there, not to stir out of the house for any reason. Okay, then what? Then you come to the Daily Planet. I ought to have everything worked out by then. But what are you... No more questions now, Batman. i got to get going. I'll explain everything at the planet. So long. Turning away from Batman, Clark Kent hurries from police headquarters. What is his plan to trap the real monkey burglar and so clear Robin? We'll be back in a moment to find out and to uncover a new and startling development. So stand by. <laughs> Following Clark Kent's instructions, Batman has taken Robin to Jimmy Olsen's house. Then, resuming the dress and manner of Bruce Wayne, the wealthy playboy, he tags him to the Daily Planet, where we join him now in Kent's office. Okay, Clark. Robin's at Jim Olsen's house with strict orders to stay undercover. Now, start talking about your plan. Okay, Bruce, here it is. We know that the monkey burglar has been impersonating Robin to keep the police off his own track. Right. So it stands to reason he wouldn't pull off any more robberies while Robin was known to be in jail, would he? Well, of course not. Say, wait a minute. Is that why you got Henderson to release Robin? Well, naturally. With Robin loose, our acrobatic thief will feel free once again to do his stuff. And that's where you and I come in. You mean we nab him in the act, eh? Right. Oh, that's a tall order. 
Even for Batman and Superman. Why? How do we know where he's going to strike? Well, the way things shape up, we can be fairly sure. How? Well, I've discovered since I left you that most of the fashionable apartment buildings in Metropolis, where the big money people live, put on special guards today to protect the buildings from the monkey burglar. Uh-uh, that's not so good. If we're to catch the fellow, I mean. He'll spot the guards and shy off. Right. But not all the classy apartments put on guards, and one of them that didn't is the one we're interested in. All right, but just the same... Wait a minute, I... listen. I've just done a page one story for the planet, which will be on the streets in an hour. The story announces the release of Robin from jail. Oh? And it also lists the buildings which have hired special guards. I see, but Another I... little story, which I had moved from page 10 to page 1, tells about Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Sims, the oil millionaires who collect precious jewels. What about them? They've rented an apartment for the rest of the winter in the Windsor Arms. They moved in yesterday with their jewel collection and all. Oh, you mean... Yes, the Windsor Arms is not one of the buildings listed as hiring special guards to watch out for the monkey burglar. So you think our friend will make a try for the Sims jewels? Mm -hmm. If he works according to pattern, as most thieves do, he will. He only works on millionaires, you know. Yes, I know. Then you and I will be waiting near the Windsor Arms tonight. We'll be up in the sky where we have a good view as Superman and Batman. And when our friend shows up... We grab him. Right. Now, if the trap works, and I've got a hunch it will... Robin will be cleared tonight. Eagerly, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, who are really the famous Superman at Batman, complete their plans for the trap which they hope will net the mysterious monkey burglar and clear Robin. But meanwhile, in a small apartment in another part of the city, a thin, wiry man in shirt sleeves, wearing a hat on the back of his head and smoking a cigar, answers the telephone. Hello? Yeah, who's this? Jonesy. Oh, yeah, Listen, Jonesy. The cops let that kid Robin go. I know, I just seen it in the papers. Did you tell him? Sure, sure. He left the city jail in a taxi. Good, good. Where'd he go? To a little house over on West Willow Street. Some people named Olson live there. Swell, is he still there? Sure. Slim is watching the place while I came over to the corner to phone you. Good boy, Jonesy. This works out swell, just swell. Now you and Slim stay there. I'll be right out. It's getting dark, so everything will be hunky-dory. What are you going to do, Spider? Uh, what do you suppose, Dopey? You and Slim, stay right where you are. I'll be right out. Hanging up the phone, the little man puts on his coat, jams his hat down low over his forehead, and leaves his apartment, his pig-like eyes gleaming as he pats a suspicious bulge near his left arm. This is a development neither Superman nor Batman foresaw. Now what will happen to Robin? And perhaps to Jimmy, too as Superman and Batman set their trap for the monkey burglar, who in turn is setting his trap for Robin. Monday's episode is packed with suspense and action, so don't miss it, whatever you do. Tune in Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, -E -P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Superman and Batman face the desperate fact that so far everything that has happened has succeeded only in making the case against Robin very much blacker. And now the adventures of Superman. As you know, Robin, young companion of the famous Batman, has been arrested, accused of being the so-called monkey burglar. A daring, acrobatic young thief who, wearing a costume, hood, and mask similar to Robin's, 
has been scaling the outside walls of exclusive skyscraper apartments and robbing the wealthy occupants. Clark Kent finally persuaded Inspector Henderson to release the youngster for 48 hours, promising to produce the real monkey burglar in that time or return Robin to custody. Then, while Batman took his young companion to Jimmy Olsen's house, Kent baited a trap for the mysterious thief, unaware that a man called Spider had had Robin trailed to Jimmy's house. As we continue that evening, Spider has stopped his car on the quiet street where Jimmy lives and lightly sounded his horn. A heavy-set man emerges from the shadows and strolls over to the car. Listen. That you, Spider? Yeah. What gives, Jonesy? That Robin kid still in there. Yeah? Where? In that frame house across the street. The one where the hedge is. Oh. Who's in there with him? Young guy and his mother. Olsen, their name is. You sure that Batman guy ain't around? Positive. He bought Robin here and then vamoosed. Good. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. Uh, me either, Spider. Okay. Now, this should be a fight. We're slim. Down at the corner. You want I should get him? To, to help us handle two kids and an old dame? Nah. We'll pick him up on the way back. Get in. Get in? You heard me. Get in the car. I'm going to run it up in front of the house. Okay. Uh... What are we going to do, Spider? We're going to fix it so the monkey burglar can operate again tonight. I got a bit of a job picked out for him. Yeah? How you going to fix it? By taking care of this Robin character, that's how. You mean you're going to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this has worked out perfect, Jonesy. It's unnatural. Uh-huh. But what if this guy... Oh, here... right. This the place? Yeah. Okay, get out. Oh, wait, Spider. You didn't tell me what to do yet. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Now, get out. Okay. Yeah. We'll leave the door open and the motor running. Come okay, on. Okay, but uh, will you please tell me? Now, listen, Jonesy. Now, here's what we're going to do. You walk up to the door, see? Ring the bell. Swiftly issuing instructions, the man called Spider leads his henchman up the steps to Jimmy Olsen's door. Meanwhile, unaware of the impending danger to Robin and Jimmy, Superman carrying Batman hurtles through the dark sky and checks his flight above the tall, exclusive apartment building known as the Windsor Arms. Here we are, Batman. That's the Windsor Arms just below us. I see. Where's that oil millionaire's apartment, do you know? Yes, I checked and learned that Mr. Sims occupies the entire 18th floor. Oh, that'll be a tough climb for Mr. Monkey Burglar. Not at all. He's climbed as high as 22 stories. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're all set for him if he only shows up. I think he will. My story in the Daily Planet says Mr. Sims and his wife have their valuable jewel collection in their apartment. Uh-huh. There are no special guards patrolling the building to watch out for our friend. Mm, this setup is made to order for him, all right. It certainly is. That's why I'm so sure he'll show up. He's got to. It's the only way we can clear Robin. Yes, I know. Uh-oh. Ten o'clock. It's pretty late. Where is that human fly? It's still too early for him. Most of his jobs were pulled around 11. Oh, well, here's hoping he shows up a little earlier tonight. Oh, 11 o'clock, Superman. I'm afraid we drew a blank tonight. Take it easy, chum. According to the record, this is about the time the monkey burglar goes to work. Well, I wish you'd check in and punch the time clock. Just waiting around up here in the sky is getting me down. Well, I should have brought a reading lamp and a book for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I am doing a lot of griping. Forget it. But I'm worried about Robin. Inspector Henderson is practically convinced he's the monkey burglar. We'll unconvince him as soon as we... Wait a minute. What's that? What? Did you see our friend? No, but I thought I heard something. Well, naturally, I couldn't hear anything but the wind way up here. But everything looks quiet down below. Oh, there it is again. What is it? A radio. And it said... Yes, it's in that police patrol car going past down there. Oh. Hang on, Batman. We're going down over that squad car to listen in. Down! That's the squad car just beneath us, Batman. I can see that. Quiet, wait a minute. There goes the radio again. Listen. Cars 1, 7, and 6, 3. Go to 1, 1, 1, 6, West Willow Street at 1, Say, that's Jim Olsen's address. What? I can't understand. Police officer wounded in a gunfight. Gunfight at Jim's house? Good grief. Hang on, Batman. We're going out there and fast. Let her rip. Up and away. Alarmed, Superman rockets up from his position above the speeding radio car and streaks away toward Jimmy Olsen's house. 
carrying the equally worried Batman. Like a meteor torn from its orbit, the Man of Steel flashes along the dark skyways, and a moment later, he plummets to Earth before the Olsen's brightly lighted little frame house. There, he and Batman find that one police squad car has already arrived, and an officer is holding back a small crowd. Inside the house in the living room, a police sergeant is administering first aid to a patrolman who has been wounded in the leg. Quickly, Superman and Batman buttonhole Lieutenant O'Brien. Lieutenant, where are Jim and Robin? What happened? As I get it from Patrolman Ross, that's him on the couch. Yes. Right? yes. He was walking up the street to his home. He lived just a block away. Yes. Go on. He heard a rumpus going on at the Olsen door here and then saw two men coming down the steps dragging two boys. Jim and, and Robin? Yeah. Well, Ross came on the double, calling to them, and both men fired at him. Oh. A bullet got him in the leg, and he dropped. Then by the time he got his own gun out and let go at them, they dumped the two boys in the, in the car at the curb and stepped away. Holy smoke. Did the officer hit one then? We don't know. They drove away so fast. Great Scott. Oh, heaven only knows where Robin and Jim are now, Superman. Or what's happened to them? With the color drained from their faces... Superman and Batman stand rigid, shocked, wondering what may have happened to Robin and Jimmy Olsen. We'll know more when we return in a moment with the dramatic climax of today's episode. So stand by. As we return now, it is an hour later. Superman and Batman have failed to find any trace of Robin and Jimmy Olsen. And now with Superman in his guise of Clark Kent, they are in Inspector Henderson's office at police headquarters. Look, Inspector, hasn't Patrolman Ross been able to give any description of the men who took Jim and Robin away? No, Kent, none at all. Uh -oh. But how is it, it possible? It was dark, you know, and he didn't get closer than 50 feet to them before he was shot. Yeah. And I understand Mrs. Olsen didn't see them either, because she was upstairs at the time. That's right, Batman. Nope. Nope, we haven't a single clue, except that Ross thinks they took the boys away in a Chevy sedan. And as you know, there are any number of cars like that in Metropolis. Yes, we can't count on that as a clue. Uh, I can't figure it out. The Olsen house wasn't robbed. The boys don't have any money. What do you suppose was the purpose of taking them away? I don't know. I think I can guess why. Yeah? Well, go ahead, Clark. If you have any ideas, for heaven's sakes, let's have them. Well, I think the reason oh, they uh, took... just a minute, Kent. Okay. Yeah? Oh, yes, Healy. What? What's that? What's up, Inspector? Where? When? Uh-huh. Well, I'll be a horse's neck. So that's the answer. What? Huh? Anything about Robin and Jim? Wait right there, Healy. I'll be right out. You bet I will. Right. So long. What happened, Inspector? Yes, and what are you glaring at me for? Because you and your friend Kent here took me for a sleigh ride, Batman. What? Now, wait a minute. What do you mean, Inspector? I mean that Robin's done it again. What? Robin's done what again? I'm not so sure you don't know. But just to clear all possible doubts, I'll tell you. Robin was up to his monkey burglar tricks again tonight. What? Oh, no, that's oh, impossible. Yeah. He scaled the outside wall of the Windsor Arms apartments. The Windsor Arms? Climbed 18 stories, then entered and robbed the apartment of Mr. and Mrs. Howard Sims, the all millionaires. Oh, what did no. I tell you? Yeah, he locked up Mr. and Mrs. Sims in another room. Then he lifted their jewel collection, which is worth over a quarter of a million dollars. Great, Scott. Now, wait, Inspector. It couldn't have been Robin. It was he Robin, all right. Robin, the monkey burglar. Because, again, the description given by both Mr. and Mrs. Sims identified But how could it That's have been? That's why Robin was supposedly abducted from Jim Olson's house tonight so he could rob the Sims place. Are you kidding? No. And nobody's kidding me either. Robin is the monkey burglar, and there's not a doubt in the world about it. Completely flabbergasted, Clark Kent and Batman see the iron jaws of a cunning trap closing around Robin and realize to their dismay that if they had waited above the Windsor Arms apartments only a short time longer, they would have captured the real monkey burglar. Robin, now branded a thief by the police, is missing. And so is Jimmy Olsen. Where are they and what has happened to them? Rarely have Superman and Batman faced such a bewildering predicament as the one in which they are forced to fight a clever, ruthless foe was unknown to them. So be with us tomorrow when they seek to come to grips with the elusive monkey burglar and meet an even bigger surprise. For a thrill a minute, be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. 
Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, though Clark Kent determinedly faces the tremendous problem of proving Robin's innocence... He little expects the startling events that come his way. And now, the adventures of Superman. When Robin, the young companion of Batman, was arrested and accused of being the spectacular monkey burglar who had all Metropolis in a dither, Clark Kent persuaded Inspector Henderson to release the youngster for 48 hours. Then, Kent baited a trap by placing a story in the Daily Planet saying that a millionaire with a valuable jewel collection had moved into the exclusive Windsor Arms apartments. After that, as Superman, he took Batman, and together they hovered in the sky above the building, waiting for the mysterious thief to appear. But an alarming radio message intercepted by Superman sent them streaking to Jimmy Olsen's house, where they discovered that Jimmy and Robin had been taken away by two men. A short time later at police headquarters, they learned that the daring monkey burglar had struck again. As we continue now, Inspector Henderson, furious with Kent and Batman, is more than ever convinced he was right in the first place. Listen. Now, there isn't a bit of doubt left in my mind that Robin is the monkey burglar. Nonsense. You're all wrong, Inspector. Oh, no, I'm not. Robin's confederates put on a phony abduction act tonight to try to fool us. Oh, Inspector, then, it wasn't... while we were wasting time looking for Robin and Jim Olsen... Robin broke into the Sims apartment and got away with a quarter of a million dollars in jewels. Of all the... Nonsense. Stop telling me it's nonsense, Kent. And you too, Batman. Why, it's as plain as day. Yes, except that you're mixed up, Inspector. Oh, yeah? What do you mean? Well, my guess is that the monkey burglar or his confederates were watching the city jail today, and when Robin was released, they trailed him and Batman to Jim Olsen's house. Yes, and I was dumb enough to let them do it. Then they took Robin away. So he wouldn't have an alibi for the time in which the Sims apartment was robbed. Oh, no, that of really... Of course, that's what happened. Sure. But then what happened to Robin and to Jim Olsen? Where are they? And that's what we've got to find out. I'm sure you don't have to worry about Robin. Why? Why? Because he's in some nice, safe place with the Sims jewels laughing his head off at me. Oh, oh. you're off the track, Inspector. Oh, sure. I am, huh? Sure you are if you call Robin a thief. Why, that boy's as honest as the day is long. That's right, and in case you've forgotten, he risked his life more than once to help the police department. That may be, but he's turned bad. Oh. And let me tell you this, Batman. I'm not so sure you don't know a lot more about this than you're letting on. What? Why, oh, you must Oh, now, be... Inspector, Hold you... it, Kent. You, Batman, knew Robin was at Jim Olsen's house tonight because you brought him there. Furthermore, everybody knows you and Robin are his closest brothers. Now, look, if you're insane, Wait a minute, Inspector. Wait a minute. I knew where Robin was, too. Might just as well accuse me of being in with a monkey burglar. Oh, that's ridiculous. You were just dumb, Kent. Dumb? Why? For believing that hooey about somebody impersonating Robin. Oh. And I was even dumber for letting you sell me that bill of goods. Now, look here, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yes. Yes, this is Inspector Henderson. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, put him on. Now, thanks to you two guys, I am really in the soup. Oh, what do you mean, Inspector? Because now the mayor... Uh, yes? Uh, yes, I'm right here, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what's on your... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I know about it. Well, I'm... I'm doing everything possible. Yes, I do know who the monkey burglar is, but That's I haven't... That's what you think. Look, I'm worried, Clark. Relax, Batman. But I tell you I'm doing everything possible. How can I with Robin and Jim? I know, I know, but you've got to take it easy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I was just leaving for there. Right, sir? Yes, I understand. Good night. Now listen, Inspector, Oh, uh, I... you listen. You've got me on the spot now for releasing Robin. Well, the mayor, the citizens' committee, the newspapers, everybody wants my scalp. Right, we're sorry, yes, but it's that... all your fault, both of you. Why ought I have my head examined for listening to you two in the first place? Oh, now, look, all this is getting us no place. We haven't been able to pick up Robin and Jim's trail. So I suggest I'll that we... find Robin. And believe me, when I do, he won't get out of my hands again. Where are you going to look for yes. him? At the last place he was seen, of course. Was Sim's apartment in the Windsor Arms. But Robin wasn't there, I well, tell just you. Just the same, that's the place to start from, Batman. Because the monkey burglar knows where Jim and Robin are, and the only way we can find them is by finding him. 
Come on, let's go with the inspector. Now, let's get it straight, Mr. Sims. You say you were sitting right here in this chair when the monkey burglar came in, huh? Yes, that's right, Inspector. He came in through that window. Must have climbed 18 stories straight up the face of the building. There's no fire escape, you know. Yeah, that Batman? So what? Robin isn't the only acrobat in Metropolis. Show me another youngster who can do that. Well, how do you know this fellow was a youngster? Well, from what I could see, I judge he was 15 or 60. Robin's only 14. That's close enough. Go on, Mr. Sims. How was he dressed? Why, much as Batman is. Skin tight costume, cape, hood, and a mask that covered the top half of his face. Uh-huh. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. His costume was just like Batman's, you say? Yes. Only he had a tight red jacket under his cape, and his gloves and boots were green. Oh. Robin to a T. Well, satisfied now, Batman? Of course not. I still insist the monkey burglar is impersonating Robin. Oh, baloney. I still say Robin is the monkey burglar. And by George, I'll Just find... a moment, please, Inspector. Is yes? this yours, Mr. Sims? Oh, what's that, Mr. Kent? Take a look at it. What is it? It looks like a coin, a half dollar. It isn't, though, Batman. Well, Mr. Sims? No, I never saw this before. Hey, where'd you find that, Kent? Caught between the carpet and the baseboard, right under the window through which Mr. Sims says the monkey burglar came in. Yeah, let me see it. Here you are, Inspector. What Thanks. is it, Clark? Well, I'm not sure, Batman, mm, but it looks like... Silver coin. On one side, it's in gray with a gymnast performing on parallel bars. Gymnast? Bar. Yeah. And on the other side, it says S-I-A-A. S-I-A-A? Yeah. Hey, what does that mean, I wonder? You've got me. Sure you never saw this before, Mr. Sims? Quite sure, Inspector. Looks to me like a medal, Inspector. I'm sure that's what it is, Kent. And the figure of the gymnast indicates it's an athletic medal, the kind awarded in gym contests. That's right, Batman. Now, since Mr. Sims says he never saw it before, and it was found right under the window in this room, I'd say our monkey burglar friend dropped it. Ah, uh, just of a minute. Of course. He's a crackerjack athlete. We know that much. Sure. Now all we have to do is find out what those letters stand for on the back of the medal and trace it. Uh, would you let me have it, Inspector? Nothing doing, Batman. This is police evidence. I know that, just but all Just I... tell me this. Did Robin ever win a medal like this? No, and if you're trying to insinuate... Easy, the... Batman, easy. Now, keep your shirt on. Don't forget that your skirts aren't quite clean in this business yet. What? You heard me. Oh, I'll look into this metal business in the morning. In the morning? Well, sure, it's past midnight now. But Robin and Jim... They're in trouble, and this metal is the only clue we've turned up yet. Yes, I know. But don't look for too much from it. Why? Because Mr. Sims just moved into this apartment, and the metal might have been dropped by a workman laying the carpets, or a painter, or even by a previous tenant. Well, that's pretty far-fetched. I think that Never this is just... Never mind a... what you think, because so far your thinking's been all wet. Good night, Mr. Sims, and I'll do all I can to recover your jewelry. Thank you, Inspector. Good night. Come on, Kent. Batman. Departing from the Sims apartment, Kent and Batman leave Inspector Henderson and search throughout the night for Robin and Jimmy Olsen, but in vain. The next morning, deeply worried, Kent enters Editor Perry White's office in the Daily Planet. Morning, Chief. Oh, there you are, Kent. I've just spoken to Inspector Henderson, and he says there's no word on Jim or Robin yet. Oh, I know. I've just come from headquarters. I can't understand it. If it was the monkey burglar and his gang who grabbed Robin, why did they take Jim? Because being with Robin, he saw them and could identify them. Great Caesar. Then that can mean we'll never... The phone, Chief. Oh, I'll take it. Hello? This Mr. Perry White? Yes, who is... Does a young fellow named Jim Olson work for you? Jim Olson? Yes, what about it? What about Jim? Wait a minute. Well, you'd better get out here right away, then. Something's happened to him. What? Well, what do you mean? Where is he? He's here at my place. It's Reese's General Store near River Falls, where Highway 16 crosses Orange Avenue. I know where that is, but... Well, like I said, you'd better get right out here. Uh, but wait, uh, what is now. the matter with the... So long. Confound it, he hung up. Oh, for Pete's sake, Chief, what's happened? I don't know, I don't know, but this sounds bad. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> Seizing his hat and coat, Perry White rushes from his office, followed by Clark Kent. What will they discover at Reeser's General Store? We'll be back in a moment for the dramatic climax of today's episode. So stand by. As we continue now, Clark Kent and Perry White have just arrived at Reeser's small general store outside the village of River Falls. There, Reeser, a red-faced middle-aged man, leads them toward a room at the back of the store. This young fellow who says his name's Olson came into my store just before I called you. I could see there was something wrong with him. His eyes were glassy and he was breathing hard. Uh, never mind that, Mr. Reeser. Where is he now? Right in this room. There he is, on the couch. <gasps> what? Great Scott Kent. Look. Jim. For 
heaven's sake, what happened to him? Gasping, Clark Kent and Perry White hurry to the couch on which Jimmy Olsen lies pale and motionless. What has happened to the young cub reporter? How did he get to Reese's general store? And what of Robin, who is still missing? There are thrills and more surprises in tomorrow's swift-moving episode, so don't miss it. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, despite the misgivings of all concerned... Clark Kent is certain that the monkey burglar's gymnastics medal will be the clue that proves Robin's complete innocence. And now, the adventures of Superman. Identified by two millionaire victims as the spectacular thief known as the monkey burglar, a youth who, wearing the costume of Batman's young companion, has been scaling the walls of skyscraper apartment buildings to commit robbery, Robin was arrested and jailed. With great difficulty, Superman and Batman persuaded Inspector Henderson to release the boy in order to set a trap for the monkey burglar. Then Robin was taken to Jim Olsen's house, and several hours later, both youngsters were abducted. Later that night, while Superman, Batman, and the police searched for them, the monkey burglar struck again. The following morning, a man phoned editor Perry White to inform him that a young man claiming to be Jim Olsen had walked into his small general store and, after asking that White be notified, collapsed. Kent and White dashed out, and as we join them now, they are driving the revived but still weak Jim Olsen back to the Daily Planet. Listen. How are you feeling now, Jim? Better? Yeah, Mr. Kent. Much better, thanks. Oh, poor kid. That must have been a horrible experience. It wasn't pleasant, Mr. White, I can tell you that. No, I'm sure it wasn't. Poor Robin. Heaven knows what's happening to him. You have no idea where they took him? Oh, how could I? I? I told you I was knocked out. Easy, Jim. Easy. Here we are back at the planet. You see, Batman will probably be waiting for us in the chief's office, and you can tell all of us the whole story. Come on. <laughs> Talked with your mother, Jim, and told her you're okay. Oh, Chief, thanks, Chief. Now, where is that Batman? Oh, he'll probably be here in a minute. I just called his home and he left. Well, we can't sit here waiting for him all day. I'm bursting with curiosity. Uh, why don't you start talking, Jim, and then we can bring Batman no, up no, to date. No, 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 Chief. He... No, let, let's wait just a little while. Give Jim a chance to relax some more. Well, okay, but if he doesn't come... Oh, here's Batman now. Hello, Clark. Hello. Sorry I'm late. Well, another minute and we wouldn't have waited. Waited for what, Mr. White? I did... Great guns. Jim, Jim Olsen. Hiya, Batman. I wanted to prepare you for this, Batman, but... But, but you... how did you get here? Where'd you come from? When did you... I don't know exactly. You don't know? No, I... Look, Batman, it's, it's a long story. Oh, where's Robin? I... I don't know. Good grief, what's going on no, here? No, no, take it easy, Batman. Take it easy? How can I take it easy when Robin... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll tell you briefly how we found Jim, and then he can take it from there and tell all of us what happened before that. Yes. We deliberately held him up until you got here so we could all get the story together. Well, thanks, but but poor Robin... Well, I... He'll be all right, Batman. I hope... Sure he will. Now, sit down and listen, will you? Okay. About an hour ago, we got a telephone call from a man who runs a general store in River Falls. 
He told us that Jim had staggered into his place and after identifying himself and asking that we be called, collapsed. Well, the chief and I rushed out there and found Jim conscious, but still very weak. Yes. We didn't want him to talk right away, so we carried him into Kent's car and brought him here. Now, I think he feels well enough to talk. Right, Jim? Yeah, I'm okay now. Well, then, for heaven's sake, tell us what you know. Okay, but I don't know much. Nothing at all about what happened after we left the house because I was out cold. Poor kid. Knocked out. By whom? Well, here's the story. Robin and I were talking in my house when the doorbell rang. I opened it, and two men carrying guns forced their way in. Great Jupiter. Each of them grabbed one of us. Robin yelled to fight them. Then the guy he was tussling with hit him over the head with his gun butt and knocked him out. Oh, no. I turned to yell, and then I remember seeing a million stars, and, well, a second later, everything went black. The dirty cowards. Who were the men? Did you get a look at them, Jim? No, I didn't, Mr. Kent. You see, they had handkerchiefs over their faces, and their hats were pulled down low. Uh-oh. All I know is that one was a skinny, wiry guy, and the other one was a husky bruiser. I see. Mm, that's not much help. It certainly isn't. No, but go on, Jim. What happened then? Well, the next thing I remember is waking up on the floor in the back of a car. One of the two thugs, the big one, was in the back seat with me. Another one, a different one, was driving. What about Robin? He wasn't there. What? He wasn't? No, Batman. I, I don't know what happened to him. Oh, great Lucifer. Clark... That must mean that Robin is... Easy, easy, Batman. Let's hear the rest of this before jumping to conclusions. How did you get away, Jim? Well, I didn't really get away. The men let me go. Really? They did? That's right, Chief. They stopped the car and made me get out and then told me to walk back on the dirt road we were on. It was way out in the country someplace and dark. Did they tell you where the road led? Uh Uh-huh. They said I'd come to a highway that would lead me to Metropolis. I see. Go on. Well, I must have walked for hours. The dog chased me once and I ran. On top of that, I was dizzy from that knock on the head. No wonder you fainted. Yes. Look, Jim. But, Robin, what happened to him? Gosh, I don't know, Batman. I I didn't see him. Then as the car pulled away, I tried to get the license number, but there was mud on it. Besides, my head was going around. I'm worried, Clark. Do you think the monkey burglar's gang has Robin? They must have. They took him away so he wouldn't be able to prove he was at Jim's house when the Sims' apartment was being robbed. Oh, if that's so, why didn't they let him go after the robbery, uh, the way they did Jim? Well, that's what worries me, Chief. Me too. Now, how are we going to find him, Clark? We haven't even a single clue to where he may be. Oh, yes, we have. What? What's that? Did you forget the gymnast's medal, the one we found in the Sims' apartment? Oh, yes. Well, what about it? Well, I'm certain the monkey burglar dropped it. And if he did? We'll have the identity of the monkey burglar. Well, that's not going to be easy to trace. You bet it is. Inspector Henderson may have traced it by now. Let's go over there and see. Say, what's all this about a medal? We'll tell you about it on the way to headquarters, Jim. Let's get going. Well, Inspector, now that you've heard Jim's story, do you still think Robin's abduction was phony? I certainly do, Batman. Why? What? Why do you say that, Inspector? Because I still think Robin is the monkey burglar. What? That his gang put on that phony act last but night. what about Jim? They tapped Jim on the head and took him along, just to make it look good. Oh, oh now, I look, tell Inspector. I it wasn't phony. And I say it was. And by George, I... Now, I'm listen. Looking... I've taken just about as much of wait this a minute, as I Wait had. a minute, let's not get into an argument again. But Clark, There's I... only one way to prove Robin's innocence, and that's to find the real monkey burglar. Stop wasting your time, Kent. Look, what about that medal I found in the Sims apartment, Inspector? Have you identified it yet? Yeah. Yeah, I got a report on it just before you came in, Kent. Good. What'd you find out? That it's a medal for winning first place in a gymnastics contest. Yes? One in the annual State Interscholastic Athletic Association Championships. That adds up all right, because we know the monkey burglar is a crack athlete. Right. But the important thing is the name of the winner of that medal. Did you get that, Inspector? Not yet. I was just going over to the state high school athletic office to check their files when you fellas came in. What are we waiting for? Let's all go over there now. Now, now, take it easy, Batman. Naturally, I'm going through on this clue. But the chances are we'll find the medal belongs to some perfectly innocent person. One of the workmen in the Sims apartment... I don't think so. I'm sure you're wrong, Inspector. I think that medal was dropped by the monkey burglar, and as soon as we trace it, we'll be on his trail. Come on, we've no time to waste. Let's get over to the high school athletic office. Accompanied by Inspector Henderson, our friends leave police headquarters to trace the gymnastics medal. Their only clue to the monkey burglar and to Robin. What will they discover? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so stand by. After dropping the exhausted Jimmy Olsen at his home, Clark Kent, Batman, and Inspector Henderson proceeded to the offices of the State High School Athletic Association. 
We join them there now as they are speaking to Mr. Bogart, the director. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Bogart, this medal was awarded for the gymnastic championship in a state high school meet, right? That's right, Inspector. Can you give us the name of the boy who won it, Mr. Bogart? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, Mr. Kent, I can give you the names of ten boys who won it. Ten, ten boys? Well, how's that? Well, we've been giving medals like this for the past ten years. Oh, I see. Uh -oh. But this one couldn't have been won more than a year or two ago. The monkey burglar is only a youngster. How can we be sure of that, Kent? He may be small and look young in that mask and costume. Well, yes, oh, but rats, I... rats, we know he's young. We know his name, too. Oh, now, so look. let's stop wasting time. We're not that. wasting time. Certainly not. It's worth a try, anyhow. Uh, would you get the records, please, Mr. Bogart? Be glad to, Mr. Kent. Thank you. I'm afraid we're barking up the wrong tree, Kent. Chances are this medal was won years ago. And I think it was won last year, or a year before at most. I sure hope so. And we can't afford to overlook this clue, Inspector. It's our only lead to finding Robin and clearing him of this charge. Yes, and it's got to pay off. It must. Well, for your sake, I hope it does. Here are the records, gentlemen. As you'll see, there are ten names. All right, let's have them, Mr. Bogart. I've got a strong hunch that one of them is the monkey burglar. <laughs> Eagerly, Clark Kent and Batman scan the paper on which is listed ten names, representing ten boys who won the state high school gymnastics championship within as many years. Will one of those boys turn out to be the monkey burglar? Meanwhile, what of the missing Robin? What is happening to him? Will this clue lead our friends to Batman's young companion? We'll learn much more tomorrow, fellows and girls, when we find out what has happened to Robin. So don't fail to be with us then. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman and Batman continue their search for Robin unaware that the boy is doomed to death by the monkey burglar's henchmen. And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, Batman's young companion, Robin, is in the hands of a gang behind the so-called monkey burglar, a daring young acrobat who, dressed as Robin, has been scaling the walls of skyscraper apartment buildings and robbing the wealthy occupants. In an attempt to find Robin, Clark Kent and Batman visited the last apartment robbed by the mysterious thief. And there, Kent found a high school medal, emblematic of the state gymnastics championship, which he and Batman believed to be an important clue dropped by the monkey burglar. But at the High School Athletic Association, our friends learned that ten such medals had been won in the last decade by ten different boys, thus giving them ten suspects. As we continue now, Kent, Batman, and Inspector Henderson, still baffled, are returning to police headquarters in a taxi cab. Listen. It'll take time to track down ten different boys, Clark. Meanwhile, heaven only knows what's happening to Robin. Or, or even where he is. Take it easy, Batman. We don't have to track down all ten boys who won the medal. How else can we know which one is the monkey burglar? Yeah, how do you figure that, Kent? Unless you're willing to admit it's Robin. Oh, no, don't start that routine again, Inspector. Okay, okay. What's your angle, Kent? Well, I don't think we have to track down all ten boys on this list because the monkey burglar has been identified as being about 15 or 16 years old. Uh -huh. And a boy who was in high school 10, 9, or even five years ago would be older than 15 or 16 now. That's right. So all we have to do is check the boys who won the medal in, well, say, the last four years. Is that all right with you, Inspector? Oh, sure. Help yourself, Kent. Personally, I'm all washed up with this medal angle. For my money, it's a wild goose chase. Now, look, Inspector, this I'm, is no... I'm all through listening to you fellas. 
Because the mayor, the newspapers, the citizens committee, every big shot in town is on my neck. I but know. Look, I've got just 24 hours to put the monkey burglar behind bars. If I don't do it, well, I'm out on my ear. Well, here's headquarters. Coming in with me, Kent? No, thanks. Batman and I are going to work on this list of medal winners. Yes, and I'll bet we'll make each your words, Inspector. Yeah, I doubt it. Well, again, I say for your sake, I hope so. Thanks. So long. So long, Inspector. Uh, driver, go on to 1228 Bridge Street. Okay. Uh, what's that address, Clark? That's where a boy named George Henline lives. He won the state gymnastic championship in 1945. Why'd you pick him first? Because he's first on the list. Oh. Oh, you better shed your costume, Batman. I think it would be better for you to appear simply as Bruce Wayne. Okay. Make it snappy. We're turning into Bridge Street now. <laughs> D, wasn't it, Bat... Uh, I mean, Bruce? Yes, that's what it said in the mailbox, Clark. Okay, here we are. Mm, here's hoping we get the jackpot right off. Well, we know in a minute here comes a woman to answer our knock. Well, how do you know... Oh, oh your X-ray vision. Mm -hmm. Quiet. Yes? Uh, pardon me, are you Mrs. Henline? Yes, what do We you... understand that your son, George, won the state high school gymnastic championship three years ago. Is that right? Why, yes, it is. George is a wonderful athlete. Oh? As a matter of fact, he may be on the next Olympic team. Well. That's what he said in his last letter. His letter? Uh, what do you mean, Mrs. Henline? Why, he's in Germany, you know. Germany? Germany? Well, yes, with the army of occupation. Uh-oh. But hmm. do come in, and I'll be glad to tell you what you wanted all about George. Well, thanks very much, but it won't be necessary now. We wanted to talk with your son, but since he's out of the country... We're sorry we troubled you. Yes. Thanks, and goodbye, Mrs. Henline. No trouble at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, that's that for number one. All right, come on, Bruce. Right. Who's next, Clark? Well, let's take a look. Uh, Frank Ames, 126 Crescent Drive. Okay, let's go. Well, Mr. Ames, we understand that your son, Frank, won the high school gymnastic championship two years ago. Is that right? Yes, that's right, Mr. Kent. Frank's quite an athlete. Well, may I ask why you're inquiring about that? Oh, yes, certainly. You see, I'm a reporter for the Daily Planet, and my friend Bruce Wayne Oh, here... reporters. Well, quite a few of you gentlemen of the press have been here to get a story since Frank went to training camp. What? Training camp? Why, yes. I assumed you knew he signed a contract with the Red Sox baseball team and went south to their training camp last week. No, I... Frank's an excellent pitcher, you know. Oh, oh, yes. He went south last week? That's right. Blank number two. I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, it's our mistake, Mr. Ames. Mistake? I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, we were looking for a different story. And uh, a different boy. Yes, so we'll apologize for bothering you and get along. Thanks very much, though. Goodbye, Mr. Ames. Let's go, Clark. Right. On to prospect number three. I see you're getting set for a trip as Superman. Right. Well, where to now? Next stop is downstate in Bensonville to see a boy named Phil Edwards who won the state gymnastic championship in 1943. Well, I hope this one pans out. I'm beginning to think we may be barking up the wrong tree. I don't think we are. There. All set. You ready? Yep. Let her rip. Okay. Up and away! <laughs> My son, Phil, did win the state gymnastic championship in 1943. I see. Could you tell me where he is now, Mrs. Edwards? Certainly. He's in college now. In college? Uh, yes. He's an excellent student, and he manages to keep up his athletics, too. He's on the team at State College. Uh, is uh, this a picture of your son, Mrs. Edwards? That's right. Oh, he's a fine-looking boy. Mm, he must be over six feet tall. He's exactly six feet two inches tall. Well, that lets him out, Clark. Lets him out? Of what? Uh, no, no, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Th thank you, Mrs. Edwards. Thanks very much. Come on, Bruce. We have one prospect left. Three tries and three blanks. Maybe Inspector Henderson was right, Clark, when he said some perfectly innocent person dropped the medal. Uh-uh. No, sir. My hunch still says the monkey burglar dropped it, and we've got one more chance to prove it. And who's our last prospect? A boy named Billy Riggs, who lives on Morton Street in Metropolis. He won the medal last year. I see. There we are. Now, you all set for a quick trip by a Superman Express? Yes, but this is our last chance. If Billy Riggs isn't the monkey burglar, we may never find Robin. Last chances have paid off for me before, Bruce. Well, I've got my fingers crossed, Superman. Right. Here we go. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping high into the sky with Bruce Wayne, Superman rockets back to Metropolis, following the final clue which may or may not lead our friends to the mysterious monkey burglar, and so to the missing Robin. Are they on the right track? 
We'll be back in a moment to find out, so stand by. Now, in a small apartment in the squalid tenement district of Metropolis, we find the thin, wiry man called Spider, and Jonesy, his husky henchman, engaged in conversation. Jeepers, Spider. That Robin kid sure is a little wildcat. But Slim and I got him tied up now, so he'll stay tied. Good. <laughs> I gotta laugh when I think about how the cops are sure he's the monkey burglar. Yeah, we got him fooled all right, huh? And I'm gonna keep him fooled till this last caper is over. The one we pulled tonight. Boy, is this one a pip. At least a hundred grand. Hey, that's a lot of cabbage. And how? With that and what we already got, we can retire after tonight, Jonesy. Yeah, well, that'll be okay with me. You know, the kid's been giving me the jitters. You mean Robin? No, a monkey kid. Complaining all the time, and especially since he lost his good luck piece. What good luck piece? Didn't he tell you? He always carries some little medal he won in a high school gym meet or something. Says it's his good luck piece. So what? Well, so this morning he couldn't find it. Now he went home to see if it's there. He went home? Yeah. Why'd you let him do that for, you lunkhead? Well, I figured it might calm him down if he finds his dopey metal. Anyhow, you let him go home before. Yeah, but not in the daytime when he's supposed to be in school. Hey, I never thought of that. Ah, well, maybe it don't matter anymore. Because we'll be all done with him after tonight anyhow. Look, you, uh, you're just gonna let him go then, Spider? Are you kidding? With all he knows? Yeah, I didn't think you would. Uh, how about the Robin kid? Yeah, we're gonna let the cops find him. The cops? But Robin's seen me, and he's seen you too. Don't be so dumb, Jonesy. Robin ain't gonna be able to talk when the cops find him. Oh, you mean... Sure. The cops think Robin is the monkey burglar? Okay. So they're gonna find him tonight. After we pull this last caper. But like I say, he ain't gonna be able to tell him he ain't the monkey burglar. And neither is Billy Riggs, the real monkey burglar. His little eyes gleaming, Spider pronounces doom for Robin. And for the boy named Billy Riggs, the real monkey burglar. Will Superman and Batman meet Billy Riggs, who is the one person who might yet be able to lead them to Robin in time to save the youngster's life? What will happen? A great deal happens in tomorrow's exciting episode, so don't fail to be with us. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, -E -P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman and Batman trail Robin's captor to his den, only to find that the spider's lair is empty. And now, the adventures of Superman. A small silver medal emblematic of the state high school gymnastics championship is the only clue Superman and Batman have to the so-called monkey burglar who has been impersonating Robin, and whose confederates are holding Batman's young companion. Ten boys, they learned, had won such a medal. But by a process of elimination, Superman and Batman finally reached the name of Billy Riggs, who, as we know, is the monkey burglar. Now, as our friends set out for Billy's house, a man called Spider, who had engineered the abduction of Robin, is completing plans which will accomplish the end of both Robin and his young impersonator. 
As we continue now, we find the wiry spider in his small apartment, where he is explaining his plan to a heavy-set man, his confederate, Jonesy. Listen. Now, here's the setup, Jonesy. Tonight, as I said, our monkey burglar pulls his last job. And this one will be worth about a hundred grand. Hey, that sounds good to me. Where is all this, though, Spider? It's in the apartment of a Raja. A what? A Raja. He's uh, kind of like a king over in India. Oh. Well, this Raja's over here for the United Nations meeting, see? And he's got the dough and hard cash and then lots of jewels that he keeps around his apartment in the Crescent Towers. Uh -huh. It's like hitting a jackpot. Yeah. And when we get that dough, I'll close up my gym and we'll go traveling, Jonesy. We'll see the world and never have to steal another nickel. Hot dog. Now, about the two kids, Billy and that Robin character... We'll take care of them right after the job tonight, like I said. Okay, swell. Hey, it's almost six o'clock. Where's Billy? I told you, he went home to look for that middle he lost. The one he calls his lucky piece. Yeah, I know, but he ought to be back by now, though. I told him there was a big job here for tonight. Don't worry, he'll be back soon. He'd better be. Now get this, Jonesy. As soon as Billy gets back, see that he gets dressed up in his Robin costume and we'll get going. It'll be dark by then. Okay. And oh, yeah. We'll want two cars tonight. Two? What for? Well, I'll ride with Billy in the coupe. You and Slim following the sedan with Robin. By the way, he's tied up and gagged, ain't he? You bet he is. Okay. You better go out to the garage now and check the cars. Then as soon as Billy gets back and change, we'll get started. This is a big night, Jonesy. <laughs> Spider and Jonesy prepare for the monkey burglar's final job and for the end of young Robin. Superman and Batman in their guises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne have arrived at another tenement apartment hardly a mile away. There they are admitted by Billy Riggs' mother, a gentlewoman whose pleasant face is lined with care. Sit down, Mr. Kent and Mr. Wayne. Thanks. Thank you. I suppose one of you is the new truant officer. What? Why, well, no, you see, I've we been were... expecting you. You see... I know Billy's been playing hooky a lot lately. He has? Yes, but as I told his principal, Mr. Thompson, Billy is really a good boy, and he used to like school, but he's so crazy about gymnastics. He won the state high school championship last spring, you know. Yes, we know. And now his heart is set on being a circus acrobat. Oh? He's very good at it, too, you know. Why, you should see him climb ropes and do tricks on flying rings. Oh, yes, yes. But then, when his school got so overcrowded, he could only go half days, and he wasn't allowed to practice in the gym, he... Well, he just lost interest in school. Yes, I know. It's a shame that we don't have enough schools and playgrounds in Metropolis, but uh, about Billy's playing hooky, Mrs. Riggs, do you know that... Oh, the... I've talked to him, Mr. Kent. I've explained to him how important an education is. Oh, yes, but that's not what but I meant. But as I we... say, his first and only interest is in getting to be a circus acrobat. Uh -huh. And so when he met this man who said he would help him and who had this wonderful big gymnasium that Billy could practice in and earn money, too, what? well, Billy's been going there day and night. He has, eh? Say, Billy's been working in a gym at night? Oh, yes. He's worked practically every night for the last two weeks. Uh-oh. Uh, how's he been doing, Mrs. Riggs? Oh, very well. He's been good to me, too. He bought me that new radio phonograph in the corner. Oh, yes, I noticed that. And a vacuum cleaner and two new dresses and a hat. Mm, seems to be making quite a lot of money for part-time work, don't you think? Oh, well, I forgot to tell you, Mr. Wayne, that this man who owns a gymnasium thinks Billy is bound to be a great success as a circus performer. So he's sort of acting as Billy's manager and agent, and he's been advancing him a little money as well as paying him a salary for working in his gymnasium. I see. Now, tell me, Mrs. Riggs, yes? do you have... I happen to know if Billy still has the medal he won at the state championships last spring? Why, why, it's strange you should ask me that, Mr. Kent. Really? Why? Yes, you see, Billy was here just a little while ago about that very medal. He was? Yes, it, it seems he lost it. And lost it? Oh, boy. Yes, and he was quite upset about it. We looked all over, turned the house upside down, you might say, but we couldn't find it. Well, him. that proves it, Clark. Billy is the most... Easy, Bruce. What did you say, Mr. Wayne? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing important. Uh, uh, tell me, Mrs. Riggs. Did Billy go back to the gymnasium? Why, yes, I guess he did. Uh, where is it? Do you know? Uh, it's downtown on 8th Avenue. I'm not quite sure just where, What's but, the name um, of the man who owns it? Oh, I don't know his name. Mm. But Billy calls him the Spider. Spider? Jupiter. That may be Spider Gans. You know him, Bruce? And how. And I know where his gym is, too. Prize fighters train there. Well, come on, let's run down and have a look around the place. Check. Wait, Mr. King. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Riggs. We've no time to waste. Thanks for your trouble, though. Goodbye. <laughs> Jim Clark. Oh. You see him around? Spider, I mean? No, I don't. I don't see any boy young enough to be Billy Riggs either, Bruce. Do you? No, but 
Wait, I know that character in the black jersey. He's an ex-pug. He's a fight trainer now. Hey, Mickey. Mickey Hogan. Hi, Mr. Wayne. Be with you in a minute. Okay. Hey, how come you're so well acquainted around here? Well, Bruce Wayne is supposed to be a rich playboy, you know. And as such, I'm interested in prize fights and fighters. Oh, I see. Incidentally, I happen to know that Spider Gans is a bad apple. Really? Yes, he's been mixed up in plenty of fixed fights. But he's too clever to be caught. Hey, that makes all this add up even more. Yes, and hold it. Here comes Mickey. Hiya, Mr. Wayne. How you been? I ain't seen you at the fights in a long time. Oh, I've been pretty busy, Mickey. Uh, by the way, this is Clark Kent of the Daily Planet, Mickey Hogan. Glad to know you, Mickey. Same here. Uh, look, Mickey, uh, do you happen to know where uh, Billy Riggs is? Riggs? What do you want with him? Oh, nothing. Just that my friend here heard a rumor that the boy's been working out with Spider, who's grooming him to be the next lightweight champ. So, as a good reporter, Kent wants to do a story on him. Ah, uh, well, ain't nothing in that. The kid ain't no fighter. He isn't? Nah, he just works out of the gym apparatus. Oh, I see. Well, just the same, I'd like to do a story on him, so if you'll tell me where to find him, I'll be much obliged. Well, I don't know if I can tell you that. Why? Well, uh... uh maybe this will make it easier, Mickey. Yeah, 20 bucks. Gee, thanks, Mr. Wayne. You're welcome. Think you can remember where Billy Riggs is now? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, Spider don't want us to talk about the kid on the count he's supposed to be in school, see? Oh, yeah, sure. Where is he, Mickey? I'm not sure right now. He was here just a little while ago looking for some metal or something he lost, see? Yes? The Spider called up and talked to him on the phone, and he went out of here on the double, over to Spider's house, I think. Uh-oh. Where does Spider live, Mickey? On 12th Street. Number, uh, uh, let me see now. Uh, 221. 221 12th Street? Yeah, that's right. But, hey... For the love of Pete, don't tell Spider I told you. Don't worry, Mickey. No, don't worry. Come on, Bruce, let's go. Say, wait a minute, Bruce. Hmm? I think we'd better change to our Superman and Batman costumes. This alley will do fine for that purpose. Yeah, right, Kemp. Boy, wait a minute. What? We weren't so smart, Clark. Why? What's the matter? Mickey decides to phone Spider and tell him we were asking for Billy Riggs. Don't you worry about that. We'll be there before Spider can hang up the phone. Because in case you've forgotten, we're traveling by Superman Express. Oh, that's right. Now, if only Robin is there. We'll know in two shakes. All right, I'm all set. How about you? I'm ready, willing, and able. Okay, hang on, then. Here we go. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping up from the dark alley with Batman, Superman streaks away to Spider Gan's apartment. Will they arrive in time to avert the fate arranged for Robin? We'll know more when we return for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. As we continue now, Superman and Batman have just arrived at the door of Spider Gan's apartment. Batman is about to ring the bell, but Superman, whose X-ray vision has pierced the thick door, stops him with... No use, Batman. We're too late. Too late? What do you mean? The apartment has been cleaned out. Cleaned out? Yes. Spider, Billy Riggs, and Robin are gone. Oh, no. What'll we do? Now, how can we ever find Robin? Feeling completely helpless, the two tall figures in costumes and capes stand outside Spider Gan's empty apartment. Now entirely at a loss as to how to find Batman's young companion. As we know, Spider and Billy Riggs, followed by Jonesy with the trussed-up Robin, left the apartment only a short time ago on an expedition which was to see the last exploit of the monkey burglar and which was to culminate in his finish and Robin's. And now Superman and Batman seem to be stymied. But you can depend on their doing something and soon. What it is, you'll learn on Monday when we bring you one of our most exciting and suspenseful episodes. So be sure to tune in Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep.
Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman! Today, while Superman and Batman follow their last slim clue, the villainous spider prepares for Robin's immediate death. the adventures of Superman. Convinced that Robin is being held by a clever gang of thieves to blind the police to the real identity of the monkey burglar, a daring young acrobat who has been scaling tall apartment buildings and robbing their occupants, Superman and Batman have traced a single clue to a 16-year-old boy named Billy Riggs. Then, following the boy's trail, they tracked him to the home of Spider Gans, a ferret-faced man who runs a gymnasium and who is really the brains behind the monkey burglar's operations. But when they arrived at Spider's home, hopeful of finding Robin there, they found the place empty. Discouraged and worried for the safety of his young companion, Batman turned to Kent and said, We're too late, Superman. I'm afraid now we'll never see Robin alive again. And Batman is nearly right. For at this moment, Robin, securely bound and gagged, lies on the floor in the back of a sedan driven by one of Spider's henchmen, while up ahead, Spider himself drives a dark coupe in which, seated beside him, is Billy Riggs, the real monkey burglar. Listen. Now look, Billy, this job I got lined up for you tonight's a left-handed cinch. Yeah? Sure, only 14 floors and in the back of a house facing on an alley, with no guards, no nothing. What makes that so easy? Well, you done better than that. You even climbed up a wall to the 22nd floor, and this yeah, is... Yeah, I know, I know. Look what's eating you, kid. You ain't scared all of a sudden, are you? Sure I am. What? I'm always scared, Spider. Scared silly, because I don't like this kind of stuff. Now, look, Billy. Well, I wasn't cut out to be a crook. I never wanted to do anything like this. You know that. Sure, sure, but All not... I ever wanted was to be a champion acrobat and get good enough to be a circus star. And you said you were going to help me. I am, Billy. I am. Now, just give me ah, some... Ah, that's what you said before each robbery. Just give me some time, you that's said. That's right. Just one more job, and we'll have enough money for expenses to build a big act. And keep going until we get a booking with a big-time circus. But every time it's the same thing all over again. Now listen, kid. Listen, uh... listen, listen. All I've done is listen to you. And now look where I am. Behind the eight ball with all the cops in Metropolis looking for me. Then what am I? A crook. That's enough, kid. Oh, no, it isn't. I'm going to... I said that's enough. Now you just shut up and listen to me for a minute. First of all, I want you to know that this caper we're pulling tonight is the biggest one yet, and definitely the last. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's over 100,000 bucks worth of folded money and jewels in the apartment you're going to visit tonight, see? 100,000? That's right. Now, that, together with what we already got, will put us on easy street for... Oop, hey, almost missed that red light. Don't want to get stopped by no cops tonight, not even for only passing the light. Well, look, Spider... Who's got so much valuable stuff in his apartment? One of them Indian rash has here for the United Nations meeting. And brother, is he loaded. Oh, gee whiz. I don't want to rob a... Well, a guy like that. Why? What difference does it make? Well, a U.N. delegate. Well, he's a guy who's here to stop wars. Ah, and... cut the drool. Eh, lights change. No, Spider, I'm not going to do it. What's that? You heard me. I quit right now. Oh, no, you don't. Yes, I do. You can't make me climb Can't that I? Wall. No, you can't. Now stop and let me out of not here. Not so fast, kid. Let me out of You'll here. You'll do I'll... just as I say or else. Or else what? I'll turn you over to the cops. You'll turn me over? You bet I will. I'll tell them I caught you climbing into my apartment. They'll slap you in the can so fast it'll make your head spin. Then they'll throw away the key for at least 20 years. How'd you like that, huh? They wouldn't believe you. I'll tell him you made me do it. I'll You'll tell be him... wasting your breath, sonny boy. No, no. Now, I... be a smart kid. Pull this one last job for us and everything will be Jake, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. Add up, boy. Now we'll have all the dough we need. You'll have your circus career and everything will be just hunky-dory. There's no point just standing here in front of Spider's apartment with long faces and the feeling that all is lost. I'm afraid that just about sums up the situation, Superman. Robin is... well, he... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not like you to give up so easily. But what else can we do? This is the end of the trail and Robin's not here. Nonsense. 
The very fact that the boy's not here indicates that this is not the end of the trail. Then where does it go from here? Well, that's what we've got to find out, and fast. Yes, but how? Well, I don't know exactly. That's it. Maybe we can pick up a clue inside Spider's apartment that'll put us on the trail again. Oh, say, that's a possibility. But can we just break in there? I mean, without a warrant or anything? I know it's illegal, but there's a life at stake. Right, and I'm for doing it. Okay, stand back. Mr. Spider Gans, here we come. <laughs> Here we are, Billy. This is the alley behind the Rajah's apartment, Billy. Now, you know what you're to do? Yeah, yeah. Good. But I'm still worried about losing my medal. It was my good luck piece, you know. Ah, forget it. Hey, who's that? Relax. It's Jonesy. Just pulled up in back of us. Oh. Okay, pile up. Find it. Yeah, Jonesy? Everything okay? Just dandy. Well. Now, look, Billy. The Rajah's apartment is the one on the far corner to your right on the 14th floor. Get up there as fast as you can. Scoop up everything you can find and beat it down there without losing any time, savvy? Yeah. When you're ready to come down, give us a whistle and we'll have the motors running and ready for a fast getaway. Okay. All set now, kid? Uh-huh. Right, get going. Hey, Jonesy. Yeah? Come here. It's going swell, huh, Spider? So far. How's that Robin kid? Tied up tighter than a drum. What do we do with him? I got it all figured out how we fix it so the cops find his body. His body? That's right. Now, listen. This is what you're to do. Give him a sharp rap on the head and knock him out, see? Okay, but... Be quiet and get this. When you're sure he's unconscious, take him out of the car and carry him over to where the alley comes out on the street. You got that? Yeah. Then what? Take the ropes and gag off him and let him lay there. And when Billy comes down, we jump in the car, see? Yeah. And when the cops find Robin, he's a dead monkey burglar. Boy, what a hunk of brain you got, Spider. Okay. I see Billy made the Rajah's place. Go on over and check on Robin now. Quiet and careful. figure of Jonesy fades into the dark shadows of the alley. Spider Gans lurks in the inky blackness beneath the Rajah's window, an evil smile of anticipation on his face. Will his nefarious scheme for the destruction of Batman's young companion Robin be successful? We'll know more in a moment when we rejoin Superman for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by! As we rejoin them now, Superman and Batman, in a desperate effort to find a clue that may lead them to Robin, have gained entry to Spider's apartment and are now engaged in making a thorough search. Oh, just look at this place, Superman. It's cleaned out. Yes, I see. No clothes, no papers, nothing. Nothing of any value to us, at any rate. Perfect evidence the Spider doesn't live here anymore. Hmm, nor ever intends to again. Ah, that dirty rat. If I could only get easy, my hands Batman, on it. Easy, Batman, easy does it. Okay. But you will admit we're licked now. Uh Uh-uh, not yet. What else can we do? Keep looking. For what? I don't know. Oh, that's great. Waste time here looking for heaven only knows what while somewhere poor Robin is... Scott. What's the matter? I think I've got it. Got what, man? For Pete's sake... The clue we've been looking for. You have? Look, we know pretty definitely now that Spider Gans is behind Billy Riggs, the youngster who is the real monkey burglar, right? Yes, yes, but... That would indicate that Spider picks the apartments to be robbed, wouldn't it? Well, certainly it would. Okay. Now, look. Look at this newspaper clipping I found tucked under the seat of that easy chair. Well, say, isn't that a picture of the Rajah of Surat? Uh-huh. The guy who was here as a United Nations delegate? Right. Well, what's significant about that? Well, don't you see, Batman? The man's wearing jewels worth a king's ransom. Oh, yes. Furthermore, he's immensely wealthy, and one of his reported eccentricities is to have on hand at all times tremendous amounts of cash in addition to jewels. Great Jupiter. You understand now what finding this in Spider's apartment means? Of course. He must have planned to have his monkey burglar rob the Rajah. Better than that. My hunch says he's pulling that job tonight. Then for Pete's sake, let's go there and Ah, see... wait a minute. Not so fast. The clipping's torn and we haven't his address. So we'll have to look in the Daily Planet files. Well, let's hurry. We may be too late. Keep your fingers crossed. Up with this window. Now, hang on. Here we go to the Daily Planet. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping out and into the night sky, Superman carries Batman swiftly to the Daily Planet, where they expect to find the Rajah's address, which they hope will lead them to Robin and the capture of the real monkey burglar. But Spider and his cohorts have been working fast, 
and are at this moment getting set to make their getaway, including the destruction of Robin. Will Superman and Batman arrive on time to save what appears to be a hopelessly desperate situation? We'll know tomorrow when this exciting story comes to a smashing climax. So don't fail to be with us then. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Superman is almost too late to save the life of Batman's young companion, Robin, who leads the furiously desperate spider a merry chase before this exciting story comes to a thrilling climax. And now the adventures of Superman. Anxious to find Robin, Batman's young companion, Superman and Batman followed a trail that led them to the home of Spider Gans, an underworld character who has misled a daring young acrobat into operating as the monkey burglar. However, our friends arrived to find the place empty. Unwilling to admit defeat, Superman searched every inch of the deserted apartment and was rewarded by the discovery of a torn newspaper clipping, a clue that indicated another bold robbery planned by Spider for his monkey burglar. The victim was to be the fabulously wealthy Raja of Serac, a UN delegate who had just taken an apartment in Metropolis, but the Raja's address had been torn off. As our story continues today, we find Superman and Batman at the Daily Planet, where, alone in the empty offices, they are going through a file of back issues. Listen. Well, I've already gone all through Mondays and Tuesdays papers. Sorry about the Raja's, not neither. Keep looking. Here's another. Okay. But even if we do find the Raj's address, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll walk right into Spider and Robin, does it? My hunch says it does. Okay, but it's still just a hunch. Even if it works out, how do we know Spider hasn't already gotten rid of Robin? Oh, now look, Batman. Robin's not just an ordinary 14-year-old. Yes, I know. So but... I wouldn't worry too much. After all, you've trained him pretty well to take care of himself. Well, that's right, but he's no match for a game. Granted. And why waste time arguing? This is the only clue we've got, so let's follow it through. Okay, Superman, I'll keep looking. Good. I'm still sure this lead is going to pay off. Superman's hunch is good, but Batman's feeling of impending doom for Robin is also well-founded. For at this moment, Spider is seated in a small car parked in the dark shadows of an alley, right under the windows of the Rajah's apartment. Behind his car is another, a sedan, in the back of which Robin lies on the floor, bound and gagged. As we join him now, Spider's crafty eyes are drawn up to the 14th floor in response to a whistle. This is the signal that Billy Riggs, the talented young acrobat whom Spider has forced to operate as the monkey burglar, has done his work, is ready to descend with his loot. Turning swiftly to Jonesy, his burly henchman, Spider issues his low-voiced orders. Okay, Jonesy. Billy's coming down now. You know what you're to do. Sure, I wrap that Robin kid over the noggin and knock him out. Right. Then I take the gag out of his face on time and carry him out the way the alley meets the street. Right. Then as soon as Billy gets in the car, we get going. And then the cops find what they think is a dead monkey burglar, huh? Yeah. No, no wait, Spider. What about Billy? I'll take care of him later. Personal. Now get going. Work fast and clean. Don't worry, Spider. This kind of a job is right up my alley. <laughs> Robin, old kid, you ain't gonna be uncomfortable for long now. Now, nah, relax like a good fella, and Papa will put you to sleep. As the hulking, murder-bent Jonesy leans over, his blackjack raised to strike at Robin's head. The seemingly helpless boy swiftly pulls his knees up to his chest. Then, uncoiling with the speed and power of a steel spring, Robin drives his roped feet into Jonesy's unprotected midriff. <laughs> Jackknifing with pain, Jonesy drops his head sharply and collides with a well-aimed pair of feet driven by Robin's strong young legs. And taking the blow on the point of his chin, the thug drops unconscious and rolls off the running board onto the pavement. 
Then, alerted by the sound of the scuffle, Spider leaps out of his car and comes on the run to see what has happened. Jonesy! Jonesy, what? Holy smokes, the big lug's out like a light. Well, that settles it. I'll get my gun and put a slug into the little rat. The spider, angered, rushes back to his car for a gun. The slim, costumed figure slips silently out of the dark shadows and quietly opens the door on the other side of the sedan in which Robin lies. Throwing a heavily laden sack on the rear seat, he slips a knife out of his pocket and slashes swiftly at the ropes that bind Batman's young companion. A moment later, Robin, freed, tears the gag from his mouth. Oh, thanks, pal, but who... Oh, never you? mind that now. Just Lucifer. listen. Lucifer, you're wearing my costume. Yeah, yeah, now listen. Sheepers, you're the monkey burglar. Right, but if you don't stop gabbing, we'll be a couple of dead monkeys. Spider's saw. I know. I knocked out his boy, Jones. Uh-huh. For that, he's fixing to knock you off. I couldn't let him do that. Oh, thanks again. We gotta work fast if we're gonna stop him. So Hold let's... It. Here comes our playmate now. Jiggers, what do we do? Look, you lie low until you hear the body fall. Wait, what are you... No gonna... time for explanations. Just be set to get this wagon rolling and fast. Be seeing you. Moving with the silent speed and grace of a cat, Robin steps out of the car and vaulting to its roof. Couches like a panther set for a kill. Then, when the unsuspecting spider comes into range, he springs forward and down, landing on the man's shoulders, knocking him to the pavement where he lies momentarily stunned. Quickly recovering his equilibrium, Robin jumps up, yelling, Get her going, partner! A split second later, a car motor roars into life. And as it screams off to a running start, Robin leaps aboard, slamming the door shut behind him. But at the very moment that the now penitent monkey burglar drives Robin away to what they both mistakenly believe is freedom and safety, in the office of the Daily Planet, Batman calls excitedly to Superman. Superman, look. What? Here it is. The picture story of the Raj of Serac. Well, where's his metropolis apartment, does it say? Yes, uh, let's see. It's the Crescent Towers Apartments. Okay. Now, here's where we find Spider and rescue Robin from him. If we're not too late. Let's hope we're not. Come on, get set. We're going out this open window. I'm ready. Let's go. Right. Up and away! <laughs> Well, here we are on the roof of the Crescent Towers, Batman. Good. Let's get down to the Raj's apartment. Uh oh. What's the matter, Superman? Afraid we're too late again. What? How do you know? I can see by the excitement in the Raj's apartment that the monkey burglar has come and gone. Oh, no, no. Look, maybe he and Spider are still somewhere nearby with Robin. Uh uh. At least not within my range of vision. Oh, well, what do we do now? There's only one thing left to do scour the city from the air. Hang on, here we go again. Up and away! Is Spider still behind us, Robin? Yeah, Billy. We can't seem to shake him. This skunk. Didn't take him long to come to and jump into his car, did it? Not long enough. I should have hit him harder. Well, hang on, pal. I'm going to try to lose him in some of these side streets. I'm set. The worst that can happen is we pile up. And anything's better than falling into Spider's hands again. You said it, chum. Here we go. Driving with a recklessness born of desperation, Billy Riggs, ex-monkey burglar, tears around corners on two wheels, waving in and out of narrow streets, barely averting accidents many times in an effort to shake the enraged Spider. But Spider, mad with a thirst for vengeance, will not be shaken. Finally, the car bearing the two boys screams around a corner and comes to a shrieking four-wheel stop. Robin, look. Jeepers, a dead-end street. Yeah, and here's Spider right behind us. That spells dead-end for us, Billy. And I do mean dead-end. Trapped, Robin and the boy who had been forced to impersonate him can only sit and face what seems to be certain death as guns in hand. Spider and his battered henchman Jonesy approach them. What will happen? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of this story. So stand by. As we rejoin them now, Robin and Billy Riggs are facing guns held in the hands of Jonesy and the snarling spider. Oh, you little punch. You thought you could get away from spider, huh? Now look, spider. Shut up. Okay, Jonesy, we fire together. You take Billy and I'll take this fresh punk Robin. One... Two, three, oh. and out. Oh. Oh. Hey, what the hell? Batman. Oh. Good, Batman. Wow, Spider never knew uh, what Robin, hit him. are you all right? Sure, Batman. Boy, where'd you fall from, heaven? Well, not exactly. I'd say it was just in time to save you from a trip to heaven, Robin. You too, Billy. You Thanks bet. Thanks to you, Superman. Incidentally, how did you two get together? 
And why was Spider about to rub out his monkey burglar? And how come whoa, did you... Oh, whoa, whoa, easy, Batman. I'd suggest you gather up our unconscious friends and drive them over to see Inspector Henderson. The boys can answer all your questions there. Wait a minute, Superman. Can't we do something about Billy? What do you mean? I mean, like, going easy on him. That's or... up to the courts, Robin. Right, Batman. Okay, fellas, go on and wind up the case of the monkey burglar. I've got a hunch a reporter named Clark Kent will be in a hurry to make the early morning edition of this yarn. And something tells me he'll be waiting for you in the inspector's office. So long now. Up and away! <laughs> A short time later, Superman and his guise of reporter Clark Kent is in the office of Inspector Henderson, where, together with Batman, he listens and makes notes for a Daily Planet scoop story on the monkey burglar, as Robin and Billy Riggs give evidence against Spider and Jonesy. But if Superman thinks his work is done for the day, he is very much mistaken. For at this same time, this very night, a small group of men are gathered around a table in the study of a palatial metropolis residence. And these men, known among themselves as Knights of the White Carnation, a brewing a menace more potent than any Superman has yet encountered. Tomorrow, gang, we meet the Knights of the White Carnation and learn how their dark plans are uncoiling like some deadly snake ready to strike at you and me. So don't fail to be with us then. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal.